Appreciate the support here on the channel. The goal is 50,000 subscribers this year. Be sure to hit that button if you haven't already. Thinking back to the 2010s, one substantial story that comes to mind, especially towards the latter stages, was the decision surrounding Airbus purchasing the C-Series and rebranding it to the A220. It was a story that captivated our industry and also the general public too, making headlines right around the world. Strategic decisions are pretty critical to a company's success, and while significant choices always, again, like I said, make headlines, there are daily decisions that are made to better each respective company. One such pivotal decision was when Bombardier launched the C-Series, a bold move that eventually led to Airbus acquiring the program and transforming it into, as we know it today, the successful A220. Bombardier's decision to launch the C-Series was driven by a desire to compete in the narrow body market, with industry giants of Boeing and Airbus dominating it. This feeling certainly resonates with any plane maker outside of the big two that continues to try and forge its pathway into the market to obtain levels of success and really create maybe a big three. Embraer is, yes, pushing hard, but its offering, while practical and successful, really only fills a specific niche, which means it is hard for them to, say, compete in the wide-body landscape. The C-Series was designated to fill the 100 to 150 seat market, and it was also aimed at filling a gap in in the product lineup that they offered to cater to what customers were requiring at the time. What is pretty important to consider is it is also where the manufacturer believed Airbus and Boeing lacked. The C-Series boasted fantastic upgrades and cutting-edge technology, but ultimately the plane maker did face significant challenges, including delays, rising costs, and difficulties securing orders. There was a hefty financial strain, and it prompted them to seek a strategic partner where possible, and this led to Airbus's involvement. Airbus's decision to acquire the C-Series marked what many people describe as one of the most significant moments in the past decade or so for our industry. Nowadays, it would fly under the radar, as it has become the new normal, but its importance can't be forgotten. Airbus viewed the C-Series as a perfect means to strengthen its position in the single single-aisle market and generally offer an aircraft type that was required but was something outside of its existing portfolio. Additionally, the plane was viewed as perfect at fending off the emerging Embraer who were beginning to turn the heads of many customers globally. Well, as for Boeing, well, many analysts would argue that the American plane maker didn't really have an offering in that sector, at least not anymore. Maybe the closest would have been the dated 717, which as we know, the A220 is doing a fantastic job at replacing alongside Embraer jets at the moment. So for Airbus, well, they viewed it as an opportunity that just had to be taken. By acquiring a stake in the program, Airbus really aimed to offer a more comprehensive aircraft, covering more essential areas, and simply using its strategic position within the industry to bring in more customers. Airbus's acquisition of the C-Series was finalised in 2018, leading to the rebranding of the aircraft that we now know as just the A220, including the A220-100 and A220-300. Some people have pretty strong opinions on this acquisition. These people may instead choose to stick with the C-Series naming. Some love it. Still though, the A220 did mark a switch from the typical A300 naming sequence for commercial aircraft that was adopted by Airbus. And while it seems natural now, back in 2018, it certainly looked all kinds of wrong. Airbus envisaged the A220 as a game changer in the single aisle segment, which if they were able to execute correctly, would do very well. But in terms of its execution, they would really need to focus on the marketing, contracts and communication with existing and new customers pitching this aircraft with their newfound acquisition. The belief was that it would be able to offer these airlines what can be only be described as an incredibly versatile aircraft that would provide solutions right across the board, while also being, for some airlines, the perfect grade on aging single-aisle regional jets. A perfect example, in my opinion, would be Qantas. They are retiring the Boeing 717s at Qantas Link and have selected the Airbus A220 family jets to power their future. 
the difference between the 717 and the A220 is light and day. That shouldn't really come as a shock though. The 717 is a fantastic aircraft, but it's getting on in terms of age. The new generation A220 is going to open up many new possibilities for Qantas looking ahead. New route combinations, better efficiency, and more comfort for passengers. Moreover, Airbus really saw the A220 as a potential airliner that could connect smaller cities, which would enable airlines such as what I just touched on with Qantas to optimize their route networks and cater to growing demand for point-to-point -point travel from different markets. This trend has become definitely more significant over recent years, and newer customers of the A220 have enjoyed the ability to connect more cities around their home bases that they previously would not have been able to do with older aircraft types, or maybe they could have, but simply not in a manageable or efficient manner. That is why the A220 has enjoyed so much success within the market and why the C-Series can be viewed as a good aircraft to begin with. It is really adapting to what the market requires. But has it been a success? Well, since 2018, a lot has happened. I think we can definitely say that. But to really determine if the A220 has been proven to be a success for Airbus, well, we have to take a look at a couple of things. The aircraft purchase was, yes, initially controversial, as you'd expect with any big decision in Inside the industry, but even with that considered, I think many would say it has done very well. One market that Airbus was genuinely focused on with their A220 was North America. It believed there was a substantial amount of potential here to replace some of the aging regional jets and offer customers more flexibility with this new entry into the market. Since Airbus acquired the C-Series, they have really pushed it in North America, and it's been a massive success. You can see it right around Canada and the United States, with so many airlines opting for this as its flexibility is unrivaled. As for the backlog of the A220 now, well, it's pretty strong, and excluding some minor issues throughout recent times that have been related to engines and such, it's also proved to be a reliable aircraft for most customers. The success of the A220 can be further reflected in its order book, with airlines right around the world placing orders. And now in 2024, and even throughout the pandemic, the aircraft type still proved to be a plane that customers were interested in, which is fantastic to see and really highlights how its position in the future will definitely be there. And Airbus will look to continue adding new and existing customers. Speaking of the future, what's next for it? Well, like I said, they'll continue to push into new markets with this plane and strengthen themselves in existing one. They may also look to stretch the plane further. Dubbed the A220-500, this variant could be used to address the continued demand for several parties interested and bridge the gap between the A220 and the A320neo family even better. That is going to conclude today's analysis. If you have any thoughts, you are more than welcome to drop them down below in the comments. Thank you very much for tuning in. Your support is greatly appreciated. Please take care, do also be safe, and I will see you next time for more analysis right here on Globetrotting.